Hey everybody, thanks for coming out. Um, I'm Stephen Lang Wong, uh, or Lang Wong, if you're not into the whole uh, <laughs> the Red Claw thing. Um, so I'm going to be reading a short story called Big Man in Sky. <clears throat> Some notice him immediately. Others notice the empty cars barring the street. The crowd with heads raised, eyes squinting. They press the horns of their own cars, roll down windows in preparation for hollering. They have jobs to get to, kids to drop off at school. Then they see the man, high up in the hazy sky, enormous legs dangling over the ragged periphery of a gray cloud bank. Doors are opened and drivers stumble forth, engines left idling. Camera phones are raised as though an offering to this Imperium personage. Binoculars are produced and passed around. God? The voice shouts from the middle of the crowd. Is that you? The man shows no sign of acknowledgement. Possibly he is too far away to hear. Can ears such as his really be attuned to voices as infinitesimal as theirs? In any case, he is peering off into the distance, oblivious, which for many only confirms his sanctity. Lifelong doubt is felt to dissipate. Eyes well with tears of helpless, idiotic relief. For some, however, this abrupt appropriation of the celestial is somehow disappointing. Should God not be made more inscrutable than this, more profound? Should his manifestation really be so literal in nature? He almost looks like an inflatable mascot hovering above a used car lot. <laughs> it's ludicrous, really, though there are those who propose that all miracles are in a way ludicrous. Should the fact of God's existence be any less absurd? Others in the crowd wonder why religion should get to claim this being as their own. They think, perhaps, it is exactly as it seems, a big man in the sky. <laughs> why go and complicate the remarkable simplicity of such a thing? Many, of course, don't know what to think. Looking through the binoculars, they can see the man's bald head, the gray stubble, the white v-neck shirt, the sweatpants. On his gargantuan feet are what appear to be loafers. On his face, a massive pair of eye focals. God shouldn't have to wear no goddamn glasses, someone says, <laughs> looking around as if for confirmation of his wit. For the younger children, the sight of this giant poised and possibly above the town causes them to huddle close to parents. Nightmares have begun in just such a manner as this. The older kids, however, are simply happy school has been forgotten, and are more intrigued anyway by the appearance of the Channel 6 action news van. A local pastor is asked for his opinion. A rabbi waits off camera for his turn to speak. The pastor's reply is difficult to hear amid the increasing din, and the crew soon turns its attention to the crowd from which a great beseeching is underway. Many are heard to ask the man for his guidance in everyday matters. Others implore him for wisdom of a more cosmic variety. Messages to dead friends and relatives are shouted with a sort of giddiness now that they might truly be received. A few have begun proclaiming their sins in hopes of personally, personally receiving absolution. Prayer has become like that of a frenzied plea for a late ending RBI. Briefly, this attracts the man's attention. His head slowly swivels. His eyes shift in their cavernous sockets. Cheering erupts from the crowd. From somewhere, an air horn sounds. I saw him blink, a woman shouts. Another woman snatches the binoculars away. He looked right at me, the second woman claims. A struggle over the binoculars ensues. A band of teenagers overturns a trash can. The Channel 6 action news copter is dispatched. Those who live nearby duck through the crowd back home, turn on televisions. Above, the copter zips around the man. On screen, there is seen a baldest nose, a mammoth liver spot, an ear with a great white hair curling forth from its darkened sanctum. A blurry close-up of a colossal pupil is seen. So fathomless and so opacity, it can hardly be comprehended. It is then the man raises his left hand and with a mighty palm swats at the copter. A collective gasp comes from the crowd. <coughs> Booing is heard. The copter zips away. Many wonder now if the man is here to punish them. Has he been sitting there formulating some convoluted plan of annihilation all along? Or will the destruction be affected with the casual indifference of that swat? The struggle over the binoculars continues. The teenagers are attempting now to overturn a pickup. <laughs> For a moment longer, the man watches, though whether it's amusement, contempt, or something else entirely is difficult to discern from the ground. 
By late afternoon, the crowd has begun to disperse. Children are grown tired, cranky. The police are ticketing illegally parked cars. A number of homeless have appeared, begging for change. A van from the close local classic rock station pulls up. Speakers are unloaded. The DJ asks for requests. God gave rock and roll to you, soon blares forth. The head above swivels once more. The mouth is forged into the gulf of an astronomic yawning, as if the man is stirring finally from stupor. That great ocular apparatus shifts downward again from behind the prodigious lenses, and there's a long moment of scrutiny before that of recognition occurs. The man appears to truly perceive the terrestrial for the first time that day. A tremendous and laborious recalibration of limbs begins then as the scent is made from the cloud bank. The last of the stragglers fail to notice. They're making their way to the van, where the DJ has begun doling out three t-shirts. Thank you.